when Wayne focuses on the photographs, if you just like hold it in front of you, he can focus the camera in on it. Uh, you know, you don't have to hold it out in front of you. Okay, this is an interview at the Division of Military Naval Affairs Headquarters, Latham, New York, 31st of August, 2004, approximately 1.30 p.m. Interviewers are Wayne Clark and Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Matthew Wozniak is born in, uh, on date of birth, March 9th, 1919. And... Uh, I was born in Bayonne, New Jersey. Okay. Uh, what was your educational background prior to entering military service? I just graduated high school. Okay. Um, do you remember where you were and your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Uh, yes, I was in Camp Croft, South Carolina, doing basic training, and that, that was in September. Okay, so you had enlisted prior. Were you enlist? Did you enlist or were no, you drafted? I was drafted. Drafted. You were drafted prior to. Pearl Harbor. Right. All right. Um, do you remember the reaction of those around you when you heard about that? And your reaction? My, my reaction, I was on guard duty at that time. And I, and I, I knew how to uh, pull double shifts. And everybody was quite surprised about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when were you drafted into the Army? Uh, in September 41. Okay. Um, now, did you choose, select the Air Force, or did you take tests? And no, I was, I was in basic uh, training at that time, mm -hmm. infantry. Okay. Uh, where did you go for your basic training, did you say? Camp Croft, South Carolina. All right. Now, was this the first time you were really away from home? Uh, yeah, technically speaking, yes. Uh -huh. How did you feel about well, I didn't mind it a bit at that time. Mm -hmm. Did you keep in touch with home through letters? Oh, yes. And yes. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, all right. When when did you end up going into the Army Air Corps? That was after we got uh, our orders came sometime end of uh, November to go up to Fort Dix, to mm -hmm. Tent City, mm -hmm. and we were in there. And after. Uh, Around Christmas, yeah, around Christmas time is when we were ordered to get out. Oh, I, in the meantime, I was transferred to the Signal Corps. Okay, did you take any uh, additional training for the Signal Corps? Our additional training was uh, cut short because we were on a boat already. Uh -huh. so we were supposed to arrive to the Philippines, but by the time we got there, the Philippines were taken, and it took us, uh, I think it was around 31 days to get there. Mm -hmm. And we landed in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Mm -hmm. Now, did you uh, travel overseas in a convoy? Convoy, yes. Mm -hmm. And we stopped at uh, Hawaii to pick up supplies. Okay. Um, now, I noticed in your forum you said you, while you were in Australia, there were the Japanese were doing some bombing. Yes. What was that like? Uh, well, we were, we were bombing. Uh, I think it was Sydney and Brisbane. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a constant bombing. It's mm -hmm. just the ones that had a long-range bombers at that time. <clears throat> How long were you in Australia? Well. It wasn't too long, because we were down in Melbourne, we, we got in the uh, staging area, and the other, one staging area was the soldiers that are coming back from the Philippines that were wounded and all, and we were in the other area. So I think we only stood there about a week till it got everything organized, and then we went up the coast. You know, I went up the coast, uh, along the coast to Sydney, I think it was the first one. And uh, while we were in Sydney, they asked for volunteers who had any experience in drafting and all. And I volunteered at that time. And so what we're doing there is we're setting up 
the fighter sectors as we went up the coast. So we only stood there a couple of days. I remember and I, then we made the plotting board. I know I made up the plotting board, put the paintings on and all. And then uh, we went up to Brisbane to do the same thing. We had a difficult time with the trains because no, there was no true train in Australia. Each, each state or each province had their own track on a train, so you had to get off and get onto another train. Mm -hmm. So once you went up there, uh, what were your duties? My, my, my duties was when I volunteered, I worked with a colonel and a major to set up the fighter sectors because all I did was make I made up the cotton boards to their dimensions and to their scale what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Now, had you had any experience in doing that? I had some experience in the drafting part of it, but I didn't have much experience doing that kind of work at that mm -hmm. time. It wasn't difficult to learn. Mm -hmm. So uh, while I was working with them, because they were from the Air Corps, they told me that I'm not going back to the Signal Corps. They said, you got to stay in the Air Corps instead. <laughs> I said, all right. So we went, we went up, always up the coast of Townsville to set up fighter sectors. And after another group in our area would also give the people what they have to spot for enemy aircraft. And we only had a few d machines at that time. So some, some people dropped back and set up different air warning signs. It, it didn't take us too long, because I think it was about um, four weeks we were up in Townsville. But our uh, initiative that I came out to convoy, we already had two squadrons up in New Guinea already at that time. And uh, at that time, the way we were taught, you just hold a job spot. Now, was the 8th Air Force formed at this time? Yes, it was all formed. We had three squadrons, 35, 36, and the 80th. And, and all our, at that time, was to do as much damage as we could do to the Japs. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of planes were they flying? Yeah, at that time, we were only five B-39s. <coughs> <clears throat> and after the pilots were told, well, that's after we got up to Moresby. Uh, well, they sent me up first up to Moresby to, 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 to make sure the fighter sectors were set up, say, with some officers and make sure they were all going. And after that, I was sent to Millen Bay. And we set one up there. And after we sent, we were sent to, uh, Good Enough Island, which was uh, west of, uh, northwest of uh, New Guinea there. Yeah. It was uh, Good Enough, Ferguson, and it was another island in there. What rank were you at that time? At that time, I was a private. Okay. So you strictly worked in headquarters with, with officers then? Yeah, headquarters, a eight, eight fighter group. Okay. Um, when did they change over to, they later, from the book there, you, they went with P-38s? Yeah. That when that did was, they transfer over to those? That was a, a year and a half later. Mm -hmm. Because uh, what we had was that the P-39s, no, we didn't have too many replacements or too many parts for them. So the, the pilots came in combat, they were instructed to not to ditch your planes, not unless they have to. Because either they're going to ditch them in a jungle or they're going to ditch them at sea. See, so they try, they, they try to bring the planes in. Because after the planes did crash on a crash strip, they used the parts for to maintain the other planes. Mm -hmm. So basically then there, there were a shortage of planes and a shortage of parts right. that early in the so, war. So, so anything they could save, from the planes that crash, they use on other airplanes mm -hmm. that need repairs. 
how long was it before uh, you started to receive better planes and, and adequate number of parts and so on? This year and a half that you mentioned? Or? About a year and a half because mm -hmm. then, then they started giving us P-40s, P-51s, and the P-47s came in. And after that, the 38s started. Oh, after we were in there, I guess the majority of the whole group really got sick. So they pulled us out because they got another squad to relieve us. And they pulled us back to uh, Old Kearns, which is uh, in Australia. And they re-equipped us with new equipment and all. And after that, we, we went up into uh, back to New Guinea. So that's, that's where you were based, out of New Guinea? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now, what kind of uh, missions did the, the P-38s fly? Uh, they were fighter units? They were fighter units. Mm -hmm. You have one squadron of P-38s, one squadron of uh, P-40s after, and a P-51s. So at different layers, the P-38s were the ones that were the highest, which they, they were extreme more maneuverable than the other one. With P-39s, the pilots would have to know how to fly them, what, what to avoid when they used to come contact with the Zeros. Now, um, I noticed you also said something about uh, you know, a photographer, photographic unit. Was that the one of the squadrons, or was it what no, you worked he, in? He, he, each squadron had uh, a photographer that takes care of the films in the plane. Mm -hmm. And what happened there is, lots of times, when it when it come in comp, combat, the film wasn't all taken. Then this photographer used to tell us to save our spools from the photographer, and he used to put them on our. And he knew how to cut them and put them on our spool so we could take pictures. Mm -hmm. Did you get to uh, go up in any aircraft at all? I, I went up in the, the uh, nose of a B-25 when they flew me into Pornsby and then they flew me into Millen Bay. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do no combat in it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But I remember my first airplane riding took me up to Millen Bay, and it was Port Moresby, but uh, the weather wasn't so good, it closed in on us, so I had to come always back to base. And then the next time they put me up in a P-30, P-39, I think, no, not P-39, PBY, okay. which I went up there and got up in there. Now, using... Uh the shortage of parts and so on, you must have had to do a lot of impro improvising to well, repair, or well, the, the unit had to the do unit, a lot of... Right. They, they used to work all night long on the airplanes. You could hear them. You could hear the generators going, because they only had a few generators at the time, at that time. They, they did a good job, though. Mm -hmm. Did they have enough supplies of, of ammunition and bombs and so on? The ammunition and bombs were, were coming in pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's just the parts and... Well, parts for the airplanes and all. And, mm -hmm. uh, and after a while, they, uh, they scrounge around and find other units that use P-39s and all this, that stuff. They made contact with them and they sent what they had. Mm -hmm. not, not our headquarters, but the main headquarters. Mm -hmm. Was there any uh, person or persons that you remember the best of your time in service? Anyone that you were real close friends with or any officers that you felt you felt comfortable with or well, friendly uh, with? I'll tell you, all the officers seem to be awful friendly because I used to work with uh, Carl Smith, Pitchford, Storm, and Grizzly. They, they all, they all had consideration. In fact, the whole unit was well considered. Mm -hmm. See, because they all, all seemed to work together. Put a long, they had long hours when time to work. 
and afterwards it's time to sleep, they to sleep. But, but when, you were, when, when you were up in New Guinea, it, it was a, a rough spot because the Japs had the upper hand of us first. Until after about six months, we, we start turning over the other way. I used to, the majority of the time, I used to sleep in the, sleep in the, in the trenches. Mm -hmm. What kind of shelters did you have there? Were you in Quonset huts or tents? No, or? all tents. Tents? All tents. There was, there was no, uh, nothing, <laughs> nothing fancy. Did no you tent. ever catch any uh, things like malaria or dengue Co fever or anything? Or? I, I was lucky. I didn't know. I, I, I caught dengue mm -hmm. fever. Mm -hmm. You yeah, had that for 10 days, but when you once get immune to it, then you're all set. Mm -hmm. But malaria, I was lucky I didn't have malaria. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they, uh, at meals time, you always had to take quinine. Till after, I think a year later, two years later, they came with Atterbrin. Mm -hmm. What was the food like? Well, the food usually was all canned food before. Beans, and after a lot of uh, well, we call it bully beef, but it was corned beef from uh, Australia, canned corned beef from Australia. Did you yeah. get to enjoy spam? Yeah, towards the end we had spam, <laughs> and after when uh, Colonel knew he had to go to a conference to the big headquarters down in Australia, the, they used to make uh, the belly tanks on the airplane. They put doors on them so they could fill, fill up with eggs, fresh fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so when we came back, we had a big holiday. All the squad would have a big holiday, so. But, but that's the way we got our fresh fruit. Mm -hmm. Did any of the pilots in your unit become fighter races? Quite a few of them. Uh -huh. By any chance was Dick Bong in, with your unit? Huh? The fighter race Dick Bong, was he with your unit? Do you know? They all had, in, in all the squires, there were quite a few aces. Uh -huh. um, was there any experience that you remember that left a great impression on you? Well, a great impression that was left with me when I first entered New Guinea was how, how primitive the place was, you know what I mean? I mm -hmm. see these natives walking around with s skirts and all that stuff, you know, and it was rather surprised mm -hmm. the majority of us because we never thought that we'd be in an area like that. Th that was an area with headhunters too, wasn't it? Headhunters was just the west of us, Speaky uh -huh. Valley, they used to call it, because one of our pilots got shot down and it got that far, but somehow the uh, natives, uh, made a raft and they put him in a, in a river and then they, they uh, got him at the mouth, mouth of the river before it went, went into the bay. He was a little bit chewed up from the alligator too. Hmm. Did you ever go out for R&R? &R? Were you ever taken back for, where did you go if you did? It really depends what you mean by R&R. &R. Uh -uh. <laughs> Did you have any official um, time when you were able to go to like Australia just to, for rest? No. No. Yes, you the, the unit would all, all, all the unit would go. Oh. Some of the pilots went though. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any USO shows that you saw? Oh yeah, we had quite a few USO shows. Do you have any big names that you uh, recall? Joey Brown. Mm -hmm. been. Brown. I can't think of the other one. There was some other ones too. So you didn't see Bob Hope? I don't think so. Okay. Bob Hope was more in the European theater. I okay. Think. Do you have any other stories that you wanted to share that maybe you recall that? Well, the other stories, I would say there was, there was no running water, no electric lights. No, and you just live there. We, we did get electric lights after, after we got more uh, generators. 
been asked to put the lights mm -hmm. on. But just for a couple hours that evening, that, that mm -hmm. would be it. So you basically were in New Guinea until the end of the war? All the way up. Mm -hmm. The way up to Ali Island. I think, oh, I got some maps here, too. Because I was a map man for, mm -hmm. for <laughs> So I used to make uh, sketch maps for the, for the pilots. Because it was a cold sign with the... Uh, what rank uh, did you... Uh, Leave when you left the service. What was your rank? Staff sergeant. Can you say yeah. Staff sergeant. Okay. Where were you when you uh, heard about the atomic bomb being dropped? The bombs. Well, I was in again somewhere. Uh huh. Do you remember a reaction to that at all, or well, we were all happy? About it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we thought we thought that was going to end up more faster at that time. Um, when did you end up going back home, back to the States? Yeah, I couldn't give you the exact date, but it was around three and a half years after being in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Was it very long after the war had ended? Were you still there for a while? I was in the States when he... I can't recall that part. Okay, that's all right. Because we we're, were still, the war was still going on when I got in the States. Okay. Um, when you were, uh, where were you discharged from? Recall that? From Fort Dix. Um, when you went home, did you ever make use of the GI Bill? Well, I tried, but I failed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you use the 5220 Club? No. Uh, did you ever stay in contact with anyone that had been in service with you? Only uh, one fellow that was uh, in Averill Park. He, he was, he was uh, in charge of this the signal corps group that was attached to the Air Force. Mm -hmm. You ever joined any veterans organizations? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, we still go, I still go to the Yank Fighter Group meetings when they have. Oh, okay. Reunions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. reunions. Did you join like the American Legion? Oh, American and, Legion, okay. yeah. All right. Um, how do you think your time in the service had a change or an effect on your life? Well, it makes you think twice that everything is not going to be easy as you think it is. Okay. Uh, you had some pictures you wanted to show us? Sure. Here, uh, I'll show you the map first. Oh, sure. Because the maps were very there's no map that shows completely all in one way. You know, I mean, Sorry, I just have to go back with so, it so I can... Now, can you show where you were based? Right here mm -hmm. and right here at the beginning. Mm -hmm. okay. And after that, we were based over here. This is, this for, I was only there for one week to set up a fighter sector. And after what happened is, we went up to Cape Gloucester, we got Cape Gloucester. Uh, Rebol was up here, which was the main, uh, main naval station for Japanese there. Mm -hmm. And he used to come down here. And this is where they went to Guadalcanal down in here. Mm -hmm. The Solomon Islands, I should say, down in there. And uh, we used to run a cover from there to there when they were trying to get there. And after what happened later, uh, we didn't stay too long 
in one place no more. We bypass all of Japanese area, and we just jump from jump, jump area to area. So we lost too much. They lost too many men fight trying to clean the place up. Uh -huh. So just in that we went up, uh, up to here, which continues on this map here. There is no complete map of we. I had it when I was in the service. We had a complete map, but that was years ago. <laughs> they don't have one now. What happened here? Continue from there. It used to be over in here. Then when I got here, then my orders came back to go back to the States. I now is the island of Black Island. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, I want to show some photos well, uh, for your scrapbook. <laughs> Shut up, folks. <laughs> This was where all the places we were in, I was in at the time. And the, and the whole 8th fighter group, you know what I mean? Okay. That's all right. I'll get that in. And this was in New Guinea. Now what, what kind of plane is that? P-39. Okay, that's the, they were called the Air Cold Air Cold, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Now, are there any, any pictures of you in here? Right there. Ah. You want to hold it right there? Well, let me focus in on it. That's good. I got it. Now, what kind of hat is that? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. That's the hat that this, they gave us at the time. And, and I had to laugh because we still had the old helmets. That was the helmets, or just the plain helmets. They didn't have these new helmets that come out. So when the new. So you had like World War One type helmets? Yeah. When, the new when you first came in, they wanted to know what army we belonged to. <laughs> Here's a group of us here. Now where are you in that picture? Do you? I don't know if I was in that picture uh -huh. or not. No, I wasn't. Okay. Well, did you do that pictures of all? Yeah, I was going to say, it, it might work better if you, you sat down and just, okay, if you could just hold that up like in front of you instead of flat, it would be easier to uh, focus in on. If you could like, yeah, lift it more up like that. Come on, like just slow it down. Now is this... Uh, Someone that, those are all Japanese planes that were hit? Right. right. Uh-huh. Do you have to uh, watch out for trench foot and so on all the time? What? For trench foot, did you have to watch out for your feet and keep your feet dry all the time? Looks like it must have been a pretty wet place. It was a wet place. Uh-huh. Good old wet place. And that, and that evening, yeah, you had to cover yourself up from head to foot, or otherwise you get bitten right up. Now, how did you bathe and clean your clothing? You didn't have any running water. Did you do it in streams? Streams, or we, when, someone, when somebody was going to do their wash, we used to split a 50 gallon drum that was used from the gasoline. And we used to cook, cook our clothes in that and clean them up. Uh-huh. Here's a good picture here. Yeah. Okay, what is that there that you're holding? Is that his group? Well, it's an aid to fire group. Um, there's no wording underneath it except the whole text. I don't know what kind of plane it is. Okay, is he in that picture? No. This, Why do you hold the cover of that book up? That's a history of his squad, the squadron. It, it says yeah, eight, eight fighter, fighter group, group in World War II and uh, the um, veterans group. Okay, could you Re hold the cover of that up? And, uh, the fighter, the whole squadron. Uh, that gives you a whole history until we got to the Philippines. Okay. 
book. Yeah. It's, it's quite a good book. book. And several of the pictures in there are duplicate of what uh -huh. Matt happened to get. It. Hey, did you want to show some of those pictures? That's uh, right. These are the natives. I uh -huh. the beginning. I might start, yeah, here they are. Now, did you, you must have had daily contact with the natives? Were they uh, close to the base? They were close to the base. You've never seen them. Uh -huh. But every once in a while, one of the pilots on her day off used to take the enlisted men, and they used to know where they were where the huts were in all, you know, because when they're flying, they could spot them. And, uh, and when the natives came into the camp area, then, then, and we're, start, we're starting to get itchy feet for, for a simple reason, as, as they were evacuated from an area where they were keeping themselves. No, there was quite a few natives around Oginnick. And uh, in fact, a lot of the natives saved our lives through the fact that we're more friendly. Japan wasn't very too friendly with the natives. Oh, there you are. Yeah. All right, here's a picture of me there. Okay. Oh, this is when we were having awards, different pilots having awards in their outfits. Are you in any of those pictures at all there? Uh, no. Okay. I can't recall, no. Okay. You've got some great photographs there. Yes. Some of the fighter planes. If, if any of you use photographs you want, I'll, I'll get them reproduced there. Here, here's some oh, of our wow. planes yeah. coming in. When they got crashed or uh, shot up. I noticed you said you had three bronze stars. What, where did you receive those? When I when I, when I come back from the service, mm -hmm. the different uh, different engagements we were in, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, we were uh, invaded by the Japs down in Milton Bay, and we never I don't know how they sneaked in. Nobody else knows why they sneaked in, because we had one squadron down there, 80th Fighter Group was stationed down there, and we were stationed up above them. And uh, they came to Milton Bay, but after, after a while, when they found out later, is the Japs were stockpiling their ammunition down at the lower end. Well, lots of times when we first went into the territory, we didn't bother crawling around to find out what's in there, mm -hmm. in the jungles. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to waste our time too much. Yeah. 
Okay. Did you want to show any more photographs or? Yeah. There's quite an exhibit uh, by the 8th Fighter Group out in Riverside, California. Oh. And they were out there a couple of years ago and they've mounted several boards with the various units and some of these photographs we did duplicate and send to the man who's in charge of that. Now, did you take most of these photographs? No. No, the majority of them came from the, well, let's put it there, we shared them. Uh -huh. the, the man, the, one fellow from one of the squadrons, uh, here. I'm in the sir one, I'm right here. We're about to see you. Okay. Now, where was that one taken? I think this was taken in Port Moresby. Uh -huh. Are you okay? And that was the group operation officer at that time, Troxel. And this is uh, heading. Uh, John. Troxel was, was an ace, wasn't he? Troxel was a pilot? Yeah. you down there? Hmm. Another plane. Well, we could do almost a history just using the photographs you have. <laughs> Well, like today, there's several of them. Yes, you Similar to that. Yeah. He's the photographer in the unit, um, sent back and had them reproduced so that whoever well, wanted to. What happened is one of the photographers worked for, uh, in the state of Washington, he worked for a photo lab before, uh -huh. and, and it was all right with the group operation. And a big headquarters in uh, Australia for him to send the negatives down there. And what he used to do is got these pictures and ask us if, if we want to be sent to home directly. And that's where we got some of these pictures that way. Uh, otherwise, you keep the roll of film in the tropa, tropa, tropics. And, and, uh, in about a month's time, it would get you all molded. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't work, see. Uh -huh. So when this, this when the uh, all these air, uh, we talk from the different three squadrons. When I used to put the film into the airplanes, after the, after they have the uh, combat with the airplanes, then there's always some film that's wasted. See, so they decided how to save that. And then he told the fellow boys, he said. If you got any spools that fit your camera, give it to us and we'll fill it up with film. Mm -hmm. But the only problem there is you'd have to figure out how long you can twist it because there'll be no numbers on it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You have to pull around that way. And, and when they're developing other film, if you give it to them, they'll develop their film too. So, mm -hmm. so that's why we accidentally we got so many pictures after a while. I think his story about the transport getting over there mm -hmm. is very interesting. The ship that you went on when you went over there to begin with? Oh, uh, this you mean the ship that went on? Yeah, what kind was it? It was a uh, Cristobal. A freighter? And it was uh, a ship for, I think it was 250 people. We used to go down to South America and Panama Canal. Uh -huh. So there was there was around 350 people on there when we were when we went over because the dance floor was all bunk beds and and the swimming pool was all Johns all around it and uh, I I remember calling the ship captain to ask for volunteers because he didn't like the way the ship was uh, fixed and they had to leave the port too early because it wasn't completed yet. So I asked for volunteers who had any carpentry experience, and I said, sure, I'll do it. So I was working with the ship personnel in order to 
finish up where, the, where they left off at. Well, thank you very much for your story.